Good morning and a very warm welcome to the service of morning praise. Today's service has been pre-recorded at St. Richard's Church, Upper Station Road in Heathfield. Um, and it was pre-recorded on Friday for today, Sunday, the 2nd of August. You can find the order of service on the website. Um, so please follow along in your own order of service at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we sing now our first hymn. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness. We've now come to our prayers of penitence. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. 
the Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. In gratitude for God's great goodness and forgiveness, we say, Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. And the collect for today, the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, Come to the water, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. And our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from them there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled and they took up what was left of the left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Now may 
may the words of my lips and the thoughts in all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Many things have changed since the readings we just heard were written. But at least one thing has not. As human beings, we need food to survive. Without food, we starve. And I think the, great, the current pandemic has made many of us reconsider our relationship with food as our grocery shopping suddenly became much more difficult in March and April this year. Walking past empty supermarket shelves probably made an impact on most of us. Now, I've seen empty supermarket shelves before, not in this country, but I remember the Norwegian butter crisis of 2011, when there was a physical shortage of butter in my home country. Um, and imports from the EU didn't happen because of the time lag after dairy tariffs were lifted. And subsequently, there was also a shortage of cream and soured cream, and then whole milk, as people started churning their own butter. So I knew what empty supermarket shelves looked like, and that you can easily substitute margarine for butter. And I remember very well that quarter of a kilo of Irish butter that my brother got me for Christmas. But enough about that. Um, that was Norway in 2011, and this is different. Now, in the UK in 2020, suddenly the supermarket shelves were bare, and we couldn't find the staple ingredients that we were used to buying. For some of us, that meant having to try new kinds of food, or changing recipes, depending on what we could or couldn't get hold of. For others, it has meant that some of the less expensive options that they rely on to feed their families suddenly simply weren't available anymore. And of course, that problem was exacerbated for those who suddenly experienced a sharp drop in their income after becoming furloughed or losing their jobs altogether and food banks across the country have reported record demand for food and other essentials. For those struggling to make ends meet, dismissing those empty shelves as a nice chance to try something new sounds remarkably like saying, if they don't have bread, let them eat cake. Access to food is, after all, a life or death question. And we all want to feed ourselves and our families. So food insecurity is a massive stress factor in so many people's lives. The people God is addressing in our reading from Isaiah were no different. And neither were those in our reading from the Gospel. Imagine the stress that Jesus' disciples experienced when Jesus told them to feed all these thousands of people, where would they get that amount of food? But then we see Jesus turning things around, taking what the disciples bring him. He distributes the food and there's enough for everyone. They don't have to worry about where the food comes from. When Jesus breaks the bread, by a miracle, there's enough. Isaiah's prophecy looks at food from a different angle. Bread and wine and milk as God's good gifts. And the prophecy says, you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Isaiah uses food as an illustration of those things we need spiritually to live but also speaks of how we as human beings spend so much of our time and our energy, our labour, on those things that don't satisfy. God satisfies, but we are so often busy with the acquisition of other things. Bread becomes the symbol of the necessities of life, and the prophet asks, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? Well, we may think of all kinds of good reasons. A healthy diet requires vitamins and protein as well as bread. Besides, we need to pay for heating and electricity, not to mention transport. People probably didn't need money for that in the Middle East 2,500 years ago, when Isaiah prophesied, at least not to the same extent. But the point remains, why do we allow ourselves to become so distracted by the things that we don't really need? This was written in a different age, of course, but speaks equally well to us today, when we are bombarded with advertisements and demands, and we're told that in order to live a fulfilling life, we need X, Y, and Z. Isaiah's prophecy sees through that and tells us the truth. No, you don't need that. What you need is to come to God. That is what will give you abundant life. In our gospel reading, we see how Jesus cared about the people's needs. But he also wanted his disciples to come to him with what they had. And so, a couple of fish and five loaves of bread, which seems, and to be quite honest, is very little, became food for thousands of people. What may seem little to us God can use as a blessing for many. That reminds me of last week's reading, of the mustard seed that grows into a tree, or the yeast that leavens the dough made out of 50 pounds of flour. We may think that what we can do or give seems small, but we don't even begin to understand what God can do with them. With our limited perspective, we focus on the limitations we have and how limited our resources are, but we don't see the potential that God sees. It isn't until the disciples bring the food they have been able to find to Jesus that they can perform, that he can perform his miracle. But then thousands of people receive enough for free. We see the prophecy from Isaiah fulfilled, all because they've come to Jesus to receive. So finally, I'd like to summarize two points that we can take away from our readings today. Firstly, I think that we have a responsibility to offer what we can and let God use it to bless others. We may not be miracle workers, but then again, Jesus is. But we need to do what we can do and we need to give what we can give. We may not see how we can alleviate all the food poverty we read about in the news or end the world's suffering. And we can't change all that. 
nor should we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by the suffering we see around us, or by the pressures of the pandemic restrictions, or by the uncertainty of the times ahead. But we can bring all those things to Jesus, along with the things that we can give or do, and ask him to show us how to use them. And secondly, but just as importantly, there are so many distractions that take our focus away from Jesus. We do need certain material things, yes. But just as people back in Isaiah's day, humans today also easily get distracted. And we need to focus on what is really essential. Seeking God's will for our lives. And that will teach us what abundant life looks like. Let us confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you find in your order of service. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we sing our second hymn, which is called, um, which is called Christ, the Fair Glory of the Holy Angels. Thank mm -hmm. you.
let us give thanks to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Before the world was made, God chose us in Christ, that we might be holy and blameless before him. Let us praise God for the glory of his name, for the free gift he gave in his dear Son. To Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, give praise and dominion, honour and might, forever and ever. Amen. Our intercessions this week has been prepared by Terry Bruce, member of the congregation at St Richard's, and I'm reading them on his behalf. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of the world you have created, for the gifts which gardens, fields and orchards bring us. We thank you for the green of the grass, the colours of the flowers and the loveliness of nature. We thank you for all that grows, which brings us food and health. Help us in nature's life to see you as the giver of all life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all your church throughout the world. In the Anglican community, we remember Archbishops Justin and Stephen. In our diocese, we ask your blessing on Bishops Martin, Ruth and William. We pray for the ongoing work and development of our Heathfield benefice, for Reverend Mitch and Reverend Torhild, for our retired clergy, lay ministers, wardens and PCCs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our troubled world. By the power of your Spirit, increase respect in men for human rights and abolish all discrimination on grounds of race, religion, sex or colour. We pray for the hungry and thirsty, for all refugees and homeless, for all who live in fear, for the sad and lonely, and for those in the depths of despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, giver of life and hope, comfort and restore all who are ill in mind and body, that they may be strengthened in their weakness. We pray especially for those who are known to us and those who are asking for our prayers. Bless them and all who serve their needs, that they may be filled with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you set before us the hope of everlasting life. We pray for the departed, particularly those we have known and loved. We think of the recently departed and all who mourn them, and all who, those anniversaries, all those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Open to all that have died the gateway to your eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. Lord Jesus Christ, take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you, for your name's sake. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
So gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we pray with confidence as our Saviour, Jesus Christ, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we've come to a very short time of notices. Um, as many of you are aware, um, we continue holding times of prayer and reflection um, in the mornings, three days a week now, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And I will be leading them for the coming week and then as I go on holiday um, and Reverend Mitch returns, um, he will take over. Uh, our service next Sunday um, will also uh, be pre-recorded, hopefully from St. George's Church, um, but we will also have a service um, here at St. Richard's, so a physical service where people can sign up uh, and come to church for those who uh, now feel, that, feel comfortable doing that. Um, the decision whether you come to church or not it is your decision alone. Um, but we are here um, and we have a limit of 30 people for uh, our services currently. Next week's service will be a service of morning praise again. Um, and in two weeks' time, um, there will be a service of Holy Communion here at St. Richard's. So please sign up for that. Um, tickets are available via a link on the Benefits website from eight o'clock on Friday morning. And another thing I could mention is that the parish magazine is available now, um, either, from, um, either from the shops um, the co-op, Sue's Shoes, um, and other places around, around the, the parishes where they've been distributed. There are also some available in the churches. Um, so if you go uh, to either All Saints or St. Richard's during the time that the church is open for prayer, um, you should be able to find a magazine there. I think that's all for the notices now. So uh, we've come to our final part of the service, which is a prayer for God's blessing um, and the dismissal. The Lord be with you. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in our hearts and in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May he give us joy in the fellowship with the saints and a share in their praises. Amen. And may he strengthen us to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And please join me now um, singing our final hymn, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. <laughs> 